Hey, I'm Dave. Welcome to my shop. I've been coding for about 40 some years now, and it all for me began back on the Microsoft 6502 basic interpreter on the Commodore 64. Technically, the first time I coded was on a TRS-80 Model 1 Level 1, but that was also the Microsoft basic interpreter, so once I got to Level 2 anyway. So it's all very much equivalent. And now my life has come full circle, or I'm going to see if it has, because I use AI like Codex a lot to help me write code. And it's getting better and better. So I was curious, could Codex actually crank out an entire Microsoft Basic interpreter fully functional with just one prompt? How close could I get with a single prompt to tell it to write Basic for me? And once we get the basics of the interpreter running on something like Mac OS and Linux, we'll see if we can get it to work on 211 BSD Unix on my PDP-11. Now the reason I'm doing this whole exercise is because I did not have ready access to a basic interpreter on the PDP-11. The only one I could find had assembly language and was written for Unix v7, but I'm on 2.11 BSD. So I thought, how hard can it be? Let's write one. And so that's how we got here today. And we'll try it and see that it actually works, if it does, on the PDP-11. And it all begins with the prompt. So let's try entering the prompt. Create a 2.11 BSD interpreter for basic. It should accept the source file as the first argument and run it as the script. Your target for functionality is Microsoft CBM Basic version 2, 6502 edition. Equivalency, and you should be as close to source code compatible with the Microsoft 6502 Basic interpreter as possible. Your code must compile and run on the PDP-11 running 2.11 BSD Unix. That means you are limited to KNRC version 2. You can use regular function prototypes, but all declarations of variables must be made in the beginning of a scope block, and so on. Create a make file to build your application on both macOS and on 2.11 BSD on the PDP-11. You may need to specify the split ID space in order to get your app to fit, or your code to fit. Build and test your code iteratively until it works properly. Your code must also run on macOS, but you can use conditional compilation to achieve that where required. The code must still be 2.11 BSD compatible as much as possible, but still work on macOS or Linux when compiled for it. Your make file should use uname to detect the PDP-11 and build for it if detected, or the macOS Linux build otherwise. Add a new basic command called sleep that accepts a number of ticks to sleep so that the sleep 60 would sleep for one second. Note that 2.11 BSD uses a very different timing mechanism than modern Mac OS. On the PDP-11, your minimum sleep time is about 1 30th of a second. Make the code as, performance, as performant as possible when executing script. Code size is also an issue, so it would be nice if the code could fit in non-split ID space, and I'll explain more of that later. Use dynamic allocation wherever practical, i.e. do not pre-allocate space for the file to be read in. Read it in and allocate the lines dynamically as you go, etc. Alright, I've got a blank workspace on a blank folder with nothing in it, and I'm going to run my prompt and see what it does. So there's nothing in here. I haven't created a make file other than the folder itself. It's completely empty, and it's going to get it as a whole cloth and cut it into pieces. Or something like that. Now, this is going to take some time, so I'm going to, this time... Start my stopwatch, reset, start, and try to look at it this time when I'm done, unlike last time when I forgot to look. So it looks like it's got five steps planned out here. It's going to inspect the repo to understand existing files and requirements. Well, that should be easy because there's nothing there. It's going to design the interpreter structure, parsing, execution model, sleep command, behavior, and for the PDP-11 tick timing, which is going to be complicated because timing on the PDP-11 is a little weird. You can't just call you sleep and sleep for a number of microseconds because its timer is all based on the 60 hertz line clock of the power line. So the minimum that you can wait is 60th of a second. And because you're probably halfway through that window already, on average, about a 30th of a second is probably the minimum that you can wait. Then it's going to implement the interpreter in KNRC with conditional sections for PDP-11 versus Mac OS and Linux. And it's going to use dynamic line storage. It's going to create a make file handling uname detection and split instruction data flags for the PDP-11, adjusting for Mac OS and Linux as needed. And then it will build and test locally on Mac OS as a proxy, ensuring the basic commands and sleep and iterate on the fixes until it works. I'm going to move myself over here for a moment. Well, this looks like it's going to take some time, so I'm going to put on some tunes. But because of copyright, you can't hear them. So one moment, please. Zero of five tasks completed so far. All 
right, it's already started producing code. We can go ahead and have a look at what it's done so far. Holy cow, it's already cranked out. A thousand lines. And it's still thinking. So here are all the standard includes that it needs. I'm surprised these all work on 2.11 BSD, but we'll find out if it does when we try to compile it there. And it's got a bunch of defines here for what architecture we're on. And if it's PDP 11, then it defines a PDP 11 variable. On the Mac, where I'm actually currently running, that will be zero. In a few minutes, hours, days, weeks, whatever it takes, we're going to try it on the actual PDP 11 as well. Looks like there's some maximum nesting for go sub and uh, for loops. That's not a bad decision. It's going to keep track of a line of text as the line number, the text itself, and then a link. Obviously, it's a link list to the next line number which is actually how BASIC does it too, on the 6502. I believe each line is terminated by a pointer to the next line, if I'm not mistaken. Got some frame information here for a for loop, some program information, and now we've got all the functions that it's going to write. Let's see what it's going to do. It's going to be able to read files, duplicate strings, trim strings, add lines. So all this stuff is basically to bring the program in line. Now it's going to run the program. It's got an execute statement. It's going to be able to parse an expression, parse a relational, parse a term, factor, primary, variable, function, and so on. Now expect to care. Don't know offhand what that's going to do. I guess we'll have to check. Match keyword. I guess that's a quick way to see if a text keyword matches in an existing programmatic keyword. Now we've got the actual execution of printing, input, if, go to, go sub, return, for, next, and sleep. Now what about, uh, like... Sign and cosine. Imagine it's doing all those. All right, it's continuing to emit and design code. It's still on step one and it has not completed it yet, so it's step zero complete. But I imagine the later steps may go actually faster than the initial code generation step, but we'll see. All right. It believes it's done. Let's have a look in the console. I'm going to put myself over here. Couldn't be this simple, could it? Could it really? No such file. Oh, I typed it wrong. It'd be simpler if I typed it right. BSD basic demo.bass survey says, hello, one, two, three. Well, my goodness, it actually ran and worked. Let's see what demo.bass actually does. It's just a for loop. Well, that's not bad. Let's try something else. Let's try coding up a little graphical sine wave and see if it can do trig and so on. And tab and some of the more edge cases of basic. I'm going to use nano as an editor and I'm going to say we're going to just call it sign.bass for a equals one to oh let's go to a hundred thousand step point two print tab 40 plus 40 times the sign of a and we'll print an asterisk at that position next day and that should be it did I type everything right? Looks like I did. Sign.bass. Missing line number. 10, 20, 30. What's wrong with this? I'm going to take the next A off here for some reason. Unknown function tab. Well, it failed to implement an important function. I will point that out to it and we'll see what it does about it. We'll let that run for a second and see if it can clean up that little problem. All right, it tried it, it evaluated it, it did it once, and then it fixed something else in there, and now it's claiming it's fixed. We'll see. Yes, it's a little fast, so we'll add a delay. Nano. And this is where, the, where it really earns its money, because I find sleep is hard for it to do. But it works, and now it's running at a reasonable frame rate. So that's not bad with what did we get? Approximately 10 minutes, less than that of codex thinking time, we got a full CBM basic interpreter. This is equivalent to the code that Bill and Paul wrote and took down to MITS in Albuquerque in order to sell their basic. Now, of course, they did not have the benefit of a C compiler and they were writing an 8080, 8080 assembly language. But since we have semi-modern C, uh, I think it's actually still interesting that it was able to compile it and it works on the PDP-11. Well, we don't know that it works, I should say. Let's go find out. 
I am going to configure. Now, let's see if I can guess the path. There, that should configure it. And now, when I go back to my source file and I say save, it should down here connect by FTP. All right, if we're lucky, what I should be able to do is to sync this code with FTP right onto the PDP 11. And then I'll be able to compile it there and run it there natively. To do that, I'm going to sync my folder local to remote, and it's already done. Let's go over to, and I'll be back in one second here. Let's open up a shell. And we're going to telnet into the machine. Actually, let's log in as me. All right, so we're on 2.11 BSD Unix on PDP 11 system, and we are going to go into source, repos, PDP source, CDBSD, CDBSD basic. Here's our files. I'm going to remove BSD basic because that one was compiled for the Mac. We don't want that. And I'm gonna type make, and this is where we're gonna to have to help the AI along, no doubt, because it's unable to test the PDP-11 make file, and it's gonna have done things it's not gonna work on its first try, so we're gonna feed that back into the AI and get it to fix it, but let's see how far it makes it. Not very far. I'll tell us specifically what error I encountered when running the make file, and it should then revise the make file. All right, it has revised the make file, so we'll go to the make file. And I will save it, which will cause it to automatically be uploaded to the PDP because I have it set to every time I save the file, automatically FTP the entire file over, and that will keep that folder up to date as I save things. But I have to remember to save them after the AI has made changes. All right, can't find standard int. That was kind of what I suspected. Okay, we'll sync it up again. This time I'll sync because it's in the main file. We want to change that in the make file at the same time. And we'll try and make again. And hey, something worked. There we go. Our next error. Okay, it's made some changes to main. All right, it compiled. Let's try running it. Not sure why this worked on the Mac, but it's not working on the PDP, and I don't know what would be the difference, but we'll let it figure it out. It's syncing a long time on this one. Okay, it's made some changes. We'll sync it up. Make. We'll run it. Look at that. It's a little too fast. Now, I'm guessing the delay is not working as expected, so I'm going to try increasing the delay and see if that works better. Nope. So we'll let it go and think about how it's implementing its timing on the PDP-11, and we'll let it no, by telling it what the results are when it makes changes. Okay, and it has made its change. Now this might be really slow. Wrong architecture, my bad. Build it, and we'll run it. There we go. Perfect stuff. So all in all, not bad. We got it to crank out a basic interpreter with a single prompt that ran out of the box on Mac OS and Linux. And then we had to do a little bit of tweaking and give it some feedback because it was unable to actually do the process in a closed loop where it compiles, tests, evaluates, and then repeats on the PDP-11. Maybe I can figure out some way to get it to actually interoperate with the shell by telnetting these VS code um, session into the PDP-11 as I've done here and then getting it to interrupt, but the shell that it uses behind the scenes for compiling and so on, I don't know how you change or modify that. So if you know, let me know in the comments. 
Uh, thanks for joining me out here in the shop today. If you like this kind of content, let me know. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel if you're not already. Please leave a like on the video, and I'll see you next time. Thanks.